So I see a lot of people when they hit the golf ball, their right shoulder kind of stays back. We call that early extension, right? So if you want to see if you stay in your posture, when you come down, you want that right shoulder to feel like it's kind of counterintuitive, but it feels level, but at the same time starts to point down at the golf ball. So you stay in your fine your hey, posture. Welcome back to Dan for Golf Instruction. Today we're going to cover what your shoulder should be doing in your golf swing, how they turn, and basically the level of them, what they do in the backswing, downswing, impact, and so on. Uh, to really help you improve your contact, improve your balance, improve your release, improve your backswing. Basically, it's going to do everything to make your golf swing more of what you want it to be more consistent. Uh, so as always, make sure you subscribe, give us a like, and hit that little bell on the video because then you'll get all the updated videos that we post in the future. So thanks for watching. Uh, so the first thing we're going to cover is how your left shoulder should move in your golf swing to help you improve your backswing. The uh, biggest fault that we usually come across is people have a reverse spine tilt. Uh, so reverse spine tilt is usually when the hips slide and the body starts to slide towards the target. Okay, uh, Some of that is how you turn your hips. Some of it is designed in your setup. So if you set up and you're tilted forward, then automatically you're going to tend to be a person who already has that reverse spine tilt. So Without talking about the shoulders, a simple fix or something that can help you right off the bat is make sure you have a little axis tilt. Now, how your left shoulder moves to help you make sure that you don't have that reverse spine tilt is when you set up to it and you start swinging backwards, I want that left shoulder to feel like it moves to the inside of the right foot. So it's gonna feel like it turns that way and you're gonna see that I still maintain that little spine tilt as I take it back, All right? You can also feel like your right shoulder moves behind you all right, if you would like to be a person who stays a little bit more centered, you're still going to feel like your shoulder moves to your right. All right, it's just not going to move as much if you're somebody who likes to stay a little bit more center posted uh, when they're playing. All right, if you really want to make sure you don't have that reverse spine tilt and you struggled with it for a while or the swaying of the hips, it's hard to turn this way and sway the hips that way. It's basically impossible. So this should help you fix that issue with the reverse spine tilt. It's just thinking about left shoulder moving to the inside of the right foot. All right, if you are focused more on your right side, just feel like that right shoulder moves backwards, all right? And it feels like it actually moves kind of opposite or more towards the center rather than out to the right. All right, so that is a common fault and that's a really easy way. And I've had a lot of success with improving people's turn and the issue with the reverse spine tilt just by fixing or giving them a different thought on where their left shoulder should go. All right, part number two, what should our right shoulder be doing in our golf swing? All right, so this is gonna be more pertaining to the through swing, and then we're gonna cover kind of downswing impact, that kind of stuff in the third part. So let's say I just take it back to nine o'clock. As I swing through, I want my right shoulder to feel like it moves on top of my left. All right, that's kind of a scary feeling for a lot of people because they're afraid that they're going to swing over the top with that move. We'll cover that in a second with the downswing portion of the shoulders. All right, so you're just taking it to nine o'clock. This is a great way to practice it. And you're just going to feel like your right shoulder moves on top of your left, and then you do your finish. All right, at the end of this video, I'm gonna do uh, some pro analysis. We'll do probably Adam Scott and somebody else of how their shoulders move, all right, to really help you guys kind of visualize and see how this should be working. All right, so just at nine o'clock, get it over that left shoulder, and then when you finish, you're gonna see everything is really posted on your front side. All right, if you are doing this incorrectly, all right, let's say you go here and you feel like you move that, but there's any weight on your back foot, you've done it incorrectly. Your right shoulder hasn't moved to the left enough. So there, move that right shoulder over the left, and then you got that nice on balance follow through because I know of a lot of those hang on our back foot, especially if you're a slicer. We got a lot of slicers who pull across. They go like that and then they have the, the fake finish at the end. All right, so this is a really good way to just help you train where the right shoulder should be moving. So now we're going to talk about the downswing portion of how the shoulder should be moving because I know the last section of where your right shoulder moved probably scared a lot of you because you don't want to swing over the top. So what you're going to do is when you take it to the top of your backswing, you still have to make sure the sequence is correct. So you're going to feel like those hands drop, 
right? And this is where the right shoulder starts to then cover the ball. We've always seen videos on how to cover the ball. This is how you do it. So take it to the top, arms drop. All right, you can see that my shoulders are pretty level at that point in time. There's not way back there, all right? Or my left shoulder isn't low. So hands drop, shoulders are pretty level. The right shoulder covers the left foot. And we finish all the way through. All right, so that is the sequence that we come across. Well, here's a few faults that I come across with that. So people are afraid of swinging over the top, so they've come up with how to shallow the club. And so they get there and then I see basically the belly button go up, the right shoulder drops back behind and they shallow it, but they hit a lot of stuff fat and they block a lot of stuff, all right? So when you get to the top, you need to really feel like you come back and those shoulders are level. Don't let the hip slide or the right shoulder will drop. You will shallow it out, but you're gonna have way more many misses than somebody else who stays on top of it. All right, and then if you just follow that sequence and really work on that, all right? I've got a lot of juniors who tend to slide their hips and they, they get their belly button out here and the shoulder gets stuck back here. So you'll see in some of the pro videos when they come back down, shoulders are level and when they make impact, it looks like everything's on that lead side. Everything's stacked on that lead side. That's why they hit the ball and compress it so well. And then you see them all kind of finish on balance. None of them really finish off balance unless they have a weird lie or they just hit the ball terribly that moment in time, right? So how your right shoulder, left shoulder, and how they move throughout the golf swing is really key. Of course, we have to have our arms move a certain way, but if you get your shoulders to move in the right sequence at the right level, you will hit the ball a whole lot better, be more powerful, finish on balance, and everything in your golf swing will get better. Uh, right. so th Looking at two swings here real fast. Uh, so if we look at face on first, you're gonna notice how he moves his left shoulder, that drives to the inside of his back foot. Okay, and then as he comes back down to impact, see how the shoulders get it to this certain point. Shoulders are close to being level right before impact, and then you're, now you're gonna see his back shoulder is going to chase over his left foot on the way through. And he gets all that weight to that front foot, and we've got a big full follow through. All right, then we've got Adam Scott over here as he takes it to the top. As he comes back down to level, you can see hands are below the buck, buckle and both shoulders look pretty level there on the way through. Okay, you can still see he maintains his tilt. His right shoulder is still pointing down at the ground. So there's plenty of room to release it and stay in his posture. So that is how our shoulders should be moving in the golf swing. All right, here's a little bonus feature about that right shoulder move. We're gonna talk about it more of what it looks like in the impact. So I see a lot of people when they hit the golf ball, their right shoulder kind of stays back. We call that early extension, right? So if you want to see if you stay in your posture, when you come down, you want that right shoulder to feel like it's kind of counterintuitive, but it feels level, but at the same time starts to point down at the golf ball. So you stay in your fine your posture because you're going to see your left hip starts to move out of the way and you get that really good impact. It's never going to be that that's really hard to do it just feels like the right shoulder starts to aim down the golf ball rather than coming in flat so you can see how the posture changes really easily so if you really want to work on having more space kind of clearing your hips a little bit all right make sure that when you come down it's level and then the right shoulder stays pointed down at the golf ball all right just a little bonus there for you if you hung on this long uh, you'll get that information